Hi, Zor. Do you need any help with anything? Just checking in to see if you're ready to present. Hi, I'm Zor, Zor Schachtman. Uh, welcome to UniZor Education. Do you hear me? Hello, anybody? Uh, is anybody hearing me? Zor, they don't have um, audio privileges. We're oh, I see. So I was just you. giving, I was just giving them just in case. I, I'm going to get it to, to, to take it away, actually. But I, right. uh, but you hear me, right? Right. If you look in the chat, you you can. I people are responding. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Great. Uh, now, so uh, welcome to Unizor Education, um, uh, which I conditionally call Creative Minds Through Art of Mathematics. Um, I'm planning to uh, to do some speech presentation first, and then I will do some uh, functionality um, uh, slides, and then I will open for, for questions and, uh, and 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 answers, hopefully. So let me first start about myself. Um, I am a mathematician by education, computer programmer, and financial advisor by profession. Um, also, I consider myself a, a math teacher by inspiration, though not professional. Um, I was educated in the former Soviet Union, graduated from um, high school specializing in advanced mathematics. Um, I had a brilliant teacher, by the way, a math teacher, Felix Barenbaum, and I still, after 50 years, maintain the email contact with him. Um, I participated in many math Olympics um, back in the Soviet Union. Um, these are basically math competitions. And um, uh, then I obtained my graduate degree in mathematics from Moscow Lomonosov University at the time when um, the Department of Mathematics of this university was actually one of the best in the world. Well, since then, things changed. Uh, from 1979, I live and work in New York. My son was born here and grandchildren as well. Now, my first encounter with uh, middle and high school mathematics in New York was through my son's education. Um, considering myself a specialist, I was quite interested in how mathematics is taught in his school. Uh, to my disappointment, I found the system of education directed more towards developing of math skills, like to accomplish this, you have to do that. Um, instead of developing students' intelligence, analytical thinking, and creativity, which my own education was based upon. Um, not denying the necessity of having certain math skills, um, I believe that the system which is based only on how-to approach um, is an excellent tool to teach a profession, but not the mathematics, which is an art and a science, and very rarely for very few people becomes a profession. Uh, in my opinion, the skills developed by the system of math education in most schools is not efficient because um, these math skills learned in school are rarely needed in real life. Like, for instance, how many times in, in your life do you have to solve quadratic equation? Um, and two, uh, uh, it, it causes actual loss of students' interest, since most of them perfectly understand that they would never need the, these skills which in turn negatively affect their study in general. Uh, students learn material just to pass the test and then happily forget it. I consider the system which my own education was built upon as having some value, and certain category of students, their parents uh, and teachers, might be interested in following it. So after retirement, I have decided to implement it via internet, and, um, and that's how the idea of Unizor education was born. Now, thinking about the idea, um, how many people in their practical experience need to do the real math which they have learned in school? Like, for instance, um, find the volume of a sphere, for instance. Well, not many, I'm sure. My personal career, by the way, after graduation from the university as a mathematician, was concentrated in the area of computer programming, system software development, finance, all areas which somewhat related to mathematics, and yet I've never had to solve any quadratic equation, or um, I, I, I basically didn't use most of the factual knowledge I still remember quite well, by the way, from my school years. 
Um, I think this lack of applicability of factual knowledge, which traditional education emphasizes as the most important for students to learn, is the main obstacle in learning math. Students do not feel the need for this information and cool down their study of mathematics, basically. Here is what I offer as a replacement of traditional fact-based and memorization-centered course of mathematics in high, mathematics in high school. Uh, students have to think about math for their brains as they think about gym for their muscles. In as much as the latter is needed for physical development, the former needed for development of their creativity, uh, analytical thinking, ability to solve real-life problems that need new previously unknown solutions. In real life, people rarely lift weights, but they do it in the gym because it improves their health, develops their strength, stamina, do whatever the real life expects them to do. Similarly, in real life, people don't have to prove theorems of geometry, but doing it in class will greatly improve their ability to solve real life problems. Mass in the school is a tool to develop the brain as weights in the gym are developing their muscles. Now, nothing uh, prepares young students for solving real-life problems as effectively as proving theorems of mathematics and solving mathematical problems. I actually have a very, very high opinion about this as a tool to develop the intelligence. Math should be taught as an ultimate form of art with everything an artist operates um, being completely a product of his intellectual power. Uh, it's abstract, it's artificial, and, and that's exactly what mathematics is all about. Using this abstraction, math students can create his own universe, giving full freedom of his creative side, trying to find new ways in the world fully under his command. Now, strongly believing in this approach in math teaching, um, I have decided to, to make this educational website, unizor.com. My plan is to introduce students of high school age as briefly as possible to math concepts and dedicate most of the time to solving problems and proving theorems. My initial plan actually was to just record lectures dedicated exclusively to problem solving and theorems. But then I realized that without theoretical lectures, I will just not be able to explain what those problems and theorems are all about. So I started with theory. Uh, at that moment, the site, the site was purely informational. But then, a chance meeting with um, a specialist in management engineering, Jesse Brogan, actually led me to a, a fruitful discussion uh, with him about this website educational process might be built. So, not just an informational website, which people can go and, like, from encyclopedia take some information, but the real process. Um, so I've added a lot of functionality to my website uh, that facilitate the whole educational process that includes active participation of all interested parties, which I basically I'm, I'm going to talk about this a little later. So um, I would like to mention that the site unizor.com is completely free, no commercials, no advertising. Uh, it's used by, well, some people around the world. I, I, I can't say many, but I do have a certain number of hits per, per month. Um, my goal is to convince as many people as possible, students, parents, and teachers, that this approach to math education is significantly more useful and produces significantly more prepared young individuals. Um, Unizor is actually a work in progress. My, plan, my plans to expand the site, the site are very ambitious. Well, at the present moment, many fundamental concepts are already covered, and it's a good time to start working with the site. Now, let's talk about uh, participants. Who is this particular site for? There are three categories of uh, Unizor uh, users. Well, first of all, obviously students. They are main laborers, so to speak, in the educational process. Um, their job is to study. Now, there are their parents or supervisors. They are responsible adults who are capable to control the educational process, um, thus performing basically managerial functions. Um, now, these responsibilities to manage the educational process can be performed, as I said, by parent or a supervisor, a group supervisor, or a teacher who is basically given these responsibilities to supervise, to manage. 
And also the, the third category is the providers of educational material, which is also teachers. Now, functions can be delegated, as I said. For instance, supervisory function can be performed by a group teacher who checks all the students' exam scores, marks, courses as completed, enrolls students to new topics, etc. But logically speaking, functions of control and providing educational materials, though might be embodied in the same person, the teacher, I separate just verbally into two categories. One, which is supervisory, and I call it the parent, basically, or a supervisor, and another is a teacher, which is a provider of educational material. Now, for teachers, Unisor offers, for teachers who are providers, I mean, of, uh, of educational material, offers to, uh, the way to individually uh, provide, uh, for instance, like lectures, video recorded, notes, etc. Um, if they play the role of supervisors, well, they can individually supervise educational process of different students in a flipped classroom, for instance, environment, allowing each one to go at his own pace along an individualized plan and checking the results, directing students to um, areas which need improvements. Working with Unisor individually, students can come to a teacher only when additional consultation is needed, thus reducing basically the workload for teachers and allowing them to spend more time where the extra time is needed. So for students, Unisor offers a challenging environment of solving problems. Some might be more complex than others, by the way. Unisor are considered to be um, the website for advanced mathematics, so maybe it's not for everybody, that, that's fine. Um, also, uh, there is an examination uh, part of the web page which uh, um, registered students actually can go to to take exam and to uh, quantitatively find out their level of knowledge. Finally, for parents uh, who are playing the role of supervisors, the managers of educational process, uh, Unisor offers actually full control over it. Um, if they're interested in this function. And by the way, I do strongly recommend parents' participation. Um, now, that includes enrolling their children in individual courses, checking their scores on the exams, and marking courses as completed, um, if exams are passed, basically, to their satisfaction. Um, it should be stated up front that many Unisor users right now, um, as, as, as I know, are just unregistered students who do not have any supervision or, or anybody else involved. They just go to the site and they take a look at this lecture or that lecture, well, at will, basically, without any kind of process, so to speak. Well, that's fine, but for the record, Unisor is much more than just a collection of theoretical and practical lectures and notes. It's created with the purpose to establish an educational process which I would actually strongly recommend um, people to take. So these are participants. Now, um, what's inside, what's the contents of the Unisor? Well, right now, there is one course, Advanced Mathematics for Teenagers, on the site, and I'm basically the one who is teaching this course. I'm putting my lectures as a video recorded um, uh, uh, files and the uh, notes for these lectures, um, however, it's designed with expansion in mind, um, and other teachers can also contribute certain information after proper authorization. There is a functionality for teachers who would like to contribute their information. Um, I also would like to expand um, the repertoire, uh, not only mathematics, but, only, uh, but, but I can probably put physics in it uh, and, and some other material. But right now, it's only for advanced mathematics for teenagers. Now, the um, educational ma material is hierarchically organized as a complete course, like math for teenagers, basically as a course. It's divided into independent categories like uh, you know, algebra, geometry, trigonometry. Now, every particular category is subdivided into topics. For instance, there is a topic um, complex numbers in, in algebra or triangles in geometry. And each topic contains a certain number of lectures. Uh, for instance, there are like, I don't know, eight, seven, uh, or nine, I don't remember, lectures about triangles in, in geometry. Now, 
Um, every lecture um, is uh, supplemented with notes. If it's a theoretical uh, lecture about like what is basically a complex number. Um, so every lecture has a note, and I will show you how basically it looks on the screen. Um, and the topics um, uh, have usually uh, exams. Now, some topics don't have, but that's just because I didn't have time to put them in. But that's, you know, work in progress anyway. Um, so um, lectures are of theoretical na nature and also about some problem solving. Usually the notes for problem solving lecture contain only um, the conditions of the problems uh, uh, and the solutions are actually in the presentation, in the video presentation itself. Now, if you would like to go to a process, like to be able to enroll, uh, check the exam, etc., that requires registration, but registration is very basic thing, like email and, and, and I think country where you're from, something like this, very simple registration. But if you are a registered student, then yes, you can uh, usually take, you can enroll, your supervisor actually can enroll you, and um, then the student can take this particular course, take exam, then the supervisor can take a look whether everything is fine or not with exam and ma mark the course as, as completed. Well, basically that's the speech which I, which I wanted to, to, to say before presenting anything um, related to the site itself. Uh, I do have a certain number of slides um, which uh, will explain the functionality of, uh, of the system. Now, um, um, maybe it makes sense to, um, to ask if there, is any, if there are any questions uh, for me right now. You can, you can put it on the chat if you want to. I'll just wait for a second or so before starting. Thank you, Lucy. <laughs> By the way, do you see my video as well? All right. So let me start with uh, uh, functionality of the website. I have a certain number of... Uh, 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 I have to go through certain... Okay, I have to mention our sponsors, which is very important, actually. They are providing um, uh, financial support for this particular conference. So these are our sponsors. That's one thing which I would like to mention. The second thing is, okay, this is a map um, which uh, I would like to, to use it uh, as a whiteboard and uh, place uh, marks wherever you guys are from. Uh, I see one market, uh, United States. Um, now, you enabled everybody to use the... Okay, I see. Thank you, Lucy. You enabled them to use the whiteboard. Okay, so if you are... Um, if you would be... You would be able to, to, to choose this star on the left of the map and just click on the star and then press it somewhere wherever you are basically from. Or any other symbol. Like this, for instance. Okay. So I have four places right now, right? Okay, thank you very much, and uh, let me proceed with the uh, with next uh, slide on the presentation, and that would be the beginning of the uh, functionality. So, the first time when somebody um, goes to unizor.com, this is the front page um, presented to, to people. Now, most important, what on this page actually is, is the menu on the left. You see this vertical menu, which starts with home, then how to register, supervise, study, teach, and then the learning material under the course Math for Teens. So it has certain 
uh, categories, as I was saying. Um, now, the categories are basically uh, are encompassing more or less what, what I believe uh, should be included into this course of advanced mathematics for, for high school uh, teenagers. On the right side, um, uh, from, the, from the video, um, you have a couple of very important points which I would like people basically to read when they are on the, on the front page of, uh, of, of UNISOR. It basically explains very, very, in a very simple format what maybe the whole site is about, but I would like to quote actually um, Albert Einstein, and I do have it on, the, uh, on, on this front page. Education is what remains after one has forgotten everything he learned in school. This basically uh, corresponds to what I was tr just trying to say, that if you are teaching in school only the, the procedures, uh, the methods how to, then basically um, it, it, it's a good way to teach a robot. Uh, but if you would like to, to teach a, a productive member, a creative member of society, then you have to really spend some time to develop his or her intelligence, his analytical thinking, and creativity. And that's what I was trying to convey in this particular um, uh, uh, educational website. Now, if you are an unregistered student, from this web page you can basically go to any particular category and in that category you can choose a topic. For instance, you want to go to a category uh, called algebra uh, and um, if you press the algebra on the website you will have this page. So algebra is divided into many different topics, uh, harmony, and num harmony of numbers, numerical systems, rational numbers, etc. Now, then if you will click on one of the topics, you will see a set of lectures dedicated to this particular topic. So let's, for instance, you are um, clicking on complex numbers topic. That's my third slide. Okay, you will see this. So now, you still have your global menu on the left, but to the right of it you have the lecture, which is video presentation itself, which you can just play um, if you are in the live website. And we can actually do it at the very end if it works. Now you have the same lecture, basically the same material, explained like in a textbook, basically. Um, and on the right you have the menu. Now, the lecture which is presented is always the first one, which is in this particular case called lecture. And then there are other lectures as well which continue developing this particular topic. Now, usually I have one or two lectures dedicated to theoretical material and then a certain number of lectures dedicated to problem solving or additional uh, theorem and additional discussion about this particular topic, which I consider to be relevant um, discussing this. Now, for instance, in case of complex uh, numbers, I, I have a problem, for instance, how to, uh, to take the square root of i, for instance. I mean, for those people who are familiar with complex numbers, it's a problem which they can solve, obviously, and I do explain how, how to do this. So, Basically, any um, topic which is uh, on, the main, on the menu on the left um, is uh, organized in this particular fashion. Uh, so the topic um, which you are particularly interested, if you are a student, you can get to this topic and basically listen to the lecture, um, solve the problems. And by the way, speaking about problems, <coughs> yes, I do explain in my, in my lecture, which is dedicated to the problems, the solution. However, I always encourage people to try to solve the problem themselves first and only then uh, listen to my lecture and listen to my solution. I mean, maybe yours is better than mine, no problem with that. So that's how the, I would say, passive education um, well, not passive really, but it's not a process, educational process. It's just an information which you, which you can get from the website. That's how, it, how it looks. That's how it works. Now, let's go back to the home page. Now, 
You see on the left, uh, top left corner, there's a sign in and sign out. So if you are um, a registered student, or if you want to register, you click the sign in, and then, depending on what exactly you would like to, to be, you are a student, or you are a parent or a supervisor, or you are a, a teacher who would like to contribute his own uh, new uh, educational material to the site. Depending on that, uh, you will have this or that <coughs> uh, sign-in uh, screen. So let me just um, uh, consider two different examples. First, if you are a parent or a supervisor, and secondly, if you are a student. Um, now, teachers who would like to contribute their information, it's a different story. I don't think I would like to uh, present it right now because it's a, a quite complicated thing. All right, so for instance, you are a parent and you would like to register as a parent and you will have um, uh, your student uh, also registered but, uh, but as a student. Then, you see, uh, there is in the middle of the left part of the screen, there is a register button. So you can click on this button, and then you can enter whatever information is um, required. And this is basically the name and the email address. And if you are a parent, you will be asked for what are the students you are registering for. If they are not registered yet, you can just basically uh, uh, leave it empty, then wait for the student to register, and then you can update your registration information. But basically, I'm looking for a match between um, parent should list uh, the students he is responsible for, and student should list a parent or a supervisor who is supervising his, uh, his educational process. So let's consider you are a parent, and you are already registered, and now you have signed in I have this p1 at unisor.com as a test parent. And for instance, you are logging in, you're signing in. So what would be the next screen which you will see? Well, the next screen would be this parent menu. Now, parents can do the following things. First of all, they can supervise those students which are registered as their students. Now, on this screen, you see my students basically presented here. Now, parent1 at unisor.com has two students, student, call, student 11 and student 12. That's their names. It, it's all the test systems. And for each student, I have current enrollment and completed enrollment. Now, in this particular case, um, uh, my student 11 is enrolled in the class called Math 14, which is the only available course, actually, which, which I have right now on the website. Student 12 is not enrolled in anything. Student into uh, course Math 14 um, do in this particular case. Well, there are three buttons on the left. Report, pass, and delete. Well, delete is obviously that I did something by mistake. I didn't want to enroll this person, etc. So that completely deletes uh, everything about this particular student. Uh, now, pass is basically trans. Uh, transferring information from the current en uh, enrollment into the completed enrollment. So if I will press, press uh, pass for this particular course of student 11, then mass 13 will become completed, and that would be the end of it, and then I will have to enroll in, 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 in something else. Report is more interesting. You can take a look at the report as the process is actually going through. As the student is going through the learning process and passes exams, then you can see the report. And here is the report. So if you press the report button, that's what you will see for student 11 course called Math for Teens. It's hierarchically uh, organized. You see the same um, directory which I have, the same menu which I have in the beginning, like mass concepts, algebra, geometry, etc., it's all broken down into uh, topics, and each topic has exams. And for each topic, I specify what's the score on this particular exam of this particular user, and what's the maximum score which can be obtained if all problems are correctly solved. This is the basis for uh, the, the, the parent or supervisor or teacher who is, uh, dead, uh, who is uh, uh, doing this particular supervision. 
this is the information which can be used to decide to basically to, to, to pass or not to pass this particular student, to consider this particular enrollment as, as completed or not. Um, personally, I recommend not to consider it completed until the score is equal to maximum score. And considering that exams on this website can be taken unlimited number of times, uh, just do as, as much as, as, as necessary to basically complete all the exams successfully. And then the topic would be, you know, considered done. Now, you can actually enroll the student into Math 14, the entire course, in which case you cannot really make it completed unless it's really completed in all its components, all its topics. Or you can actually enroll the person individually in each topic. For instance, you can enroll in algebra only. And uh, how to enroll is the, another functionality on this uh, parent uh, supervisor uh, screen, which I'm going to explain right now. So you are familiar with this my students functionality of the parent, right? There are three uh, buttons, my students available, educational materials, and my profile. Well, my profile is not interesting. You just change your name or password. But available educational materials button, this is the road to enroll the students. And that's my next slide. So for instance, you would like to enroll one of the students, and you press the available educational materials button on the next screen. Now, you see that you have basically expanded it here. Now, this is a live menu. You can press this minus, for instance, to put it together, or plus to, to expand it. Uh, and for each one, either you have the ability to drill down, that's the drill button on the left, or to enroll somebody, one of your students, in, in this particular course. So either you can enroll on the very top level, like Mass for Teens, for instance, or into any of the hierarchically uh, lower levels. For instance, you would like the person to be enrolled only in the triangles of the geometry. Well, then you can drill down to, to, to triangles uh, for, for geometry and click Enroll there. And as soon as you click Enroll, you will get this particular uh, 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 screen. So it gives you all the students. So, and it asks basically which one of your students you would like to enroll in this or that particular uh, uh, topic. Now, in this case, uh, I, I, I click the enroll for congruence and symmetry in the geometry, and that's where my uh, little window with uh, uh, student enrollment form appeared. So I click whoever student I would like to enroll, press OK, and since then, this student will be enrolled. And you will see this student as, in this particular case, as I was already showing, this is what's, uh, what the enrolled student 11 for the complete course, Mass for Teens. That's how it looks. So this is for the parent or a supervisor or, or a teacher who is playing the role of supervisor. Um, would be would be four, and now the second category is the student. So now, if you are a student, you are signing in, and again, you have to register first. And uh, if you are students, like in my particular case, s11 at unizor.com, you would um, specify the parent which I was talking about before, called p1 at unizor.com as your as your supervisor. So now you are um, submitting your information as a, as a student. You are registering as a student, and you are signing in as a student. And then the next information would be presented to you is this one. And here you will have, you will see only the courses which you are enrolled by your supervisor. Now this is slightly different than if you are not register and you go from the top menu from the very first screen, from the home screen. There you can go to any topic and basically do whatever you want, basically listen to lectures and uh, solve problems, but not taking exams because nobody knows who you are. 
if you are a registered and signed in student, then only topics which are you are enrolled in by your supervisor are displayed to you. And for each topic, you can do two things. Either you study or you take exam. So as you see, each topic has these two buttons, study or take exam. And obviously, if you study, then you will see exactly the same screen as if you would uh, go directly from the, from the home screen. So study is exactly the same. Study for a registered student is basically the same as study for anonymous person who is just logging into the system. You will have exactly the same uh, lectures, exactly the same um, notes for the lectures and, and, and problems, etc. Now, if, however, you are um, a registered student and you click exam for a topic, that's what will, present it, what will be presented to you. So this is an examination for a topic called circles in geometry. It has 12 problems, as you see. Now, there are a couple of explanation words, but this is in green. You have one problem, one of the, one of the 12, actually, and you have whatever number of answers here. So you basically click on whatever answer you, uh, uh, you, you choose as the right one, then you confirm it, and then you go to the next problem and the next and the next, and that's how you complete your exam for this particular topic called circles. And you will see the score, basically. Um, now, each problem has a certain number of points, and the number of points is ranging from one to three. One is an easy, three is the, the hardest problem. And uh, obviously, uh, at the end, your, uh, you will be, your, your, your score will be accumulated, and uh, your supervisor, a uh, parent or a teacher, whoever supervises, manages your, your process, will see on the report what exactly your, your scores are on every individual exam, and then hierarchical combined and sum, summed up to hierarchical levels. Well, Basically, this is all the information which I wanted to uh, present to you as far as the slides are concerned. And um, if you have uh, any questions, um, I would gladly try to, uh, to answer them. You have to click the hand if you would like to, uh, to say something. Lucy, is there is anything I should mention as well? Yes, okay. You have to press talk. Daniel? I gave you permission to use the mic. Hello? Uh, I don't hear, Daniel, I don't hear you. Oh, yes, right, Daniel, press talk, talk button. No, I don't hear anything. Well, you can try the chat window. I will repeat for everybody. Um, 
I don't know how useful it would be um, if I will uh, do some, some tour with you on Unisort.com itself since we have some 15 minutes left. Um, well, the website is uh, Unisort.com, so if you want, you can, uh, you know what, let's, let, let me take a poll. Um, I would like to, to know if uh, you would like to see how Unisor works live on the web. <laughs> Hello? I, I hear some noise. Up. I think Daniel hasn't touched his mic and he turned it on and um, there was some feedback. So what I just did right. was I turned it off. Okay. Thank you, Lucy. Um, so um, how about polling? Uh, can we actually ask the participants? We have six participants right now. Uh, uh, do you, would you like to see how Unisor works? Yes, I have not said. Yeah. Okay, what I would, what I would do, uh, instead of using the, there is a polling feature, which, you know, if you haven't practiced ahead of time, it might be a little tricky. Um, but what you might want to do is ask the question and then they can, um, uh, where the smiley face is under participants, they can, they can give you a thumbs up. Mm -hmm. And you yeah. can see what they're doing, or they could just type yes or no in the chat. I see. All right, so guys, press, uh, could you enter yes uh, if you would like to see something live on unisor.com? You know what? Um, yes, I see yes, I see one yes. Anybody else? Uh, now, Liz, you indicated that uh, the web uh, tour might not be um, a good choice. Should I try it, or what do you think? You can try it, just, but, but just be aware that it may not work the way that you want it to. I see. Um, so I have to I enable first, earlier, right? Okay. So I have to first enable everybody, right? Uh, I don't think so. I think you just click on the globe, the web tour button. Yeah, I got that. And I put the link in the return, and you want to make sure follow me is checked. Right. Well, I'm supposed to get the web page. Ah, uh -huh, I get you. Okay. I'm getting it. Okay, this is the front page, exactly the same as uh, on my slide. Um, do you see it? Okay, 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 people see it. All right. So, um, what's interesting about this, and I would like that, uh, actually, I would like to present this as, a, as an example of the level of, um, well, should I say difficulty? I don't know. Um, anyway, the level I would like actually to, um, to, to, to raise the, the knowledge of mathematics um, of my students. Let me go to trigonometry. Could you press the trigonometry under math for teens first? And I will wait a little bit until you will finish it. Yeah, I did click on follow me. So you have uh, changed screens, right, everybody? Do you have to change screen to, to trigonometry? To, could you chat yes? Yes, okay, okay. Now, uh, in the trigonometry, you have three columns of different topics, and I would like you to click on the, right, uh, the rightmost column, one, two, three, four, fourth topic called trigonometric uh, series. Could you do that? Okay, trigonometric series. Now, this is an example of one of the lectures which um, I would like to, to basically the students to be, well, familiar with or on level with. And uh, this is a, an example of uh, one particular problem. Uh, in the beginning, I'm just uh, talking about uh, what exactly trigonometric series is. And uh, if you will scroll down the middle window where the notes are, 
you will see uh, a little bit down the example. Um, now, in the example, I have actually two problems here. Sum of cosines and sum of sines. It's the series, uh, which is uh, sum of the trigonometric functions with different arguments. And the problem is basically to, uh, to come up with a formula which uh, basically uh, answers what exactly this sum of sines and cosines actually is. And the solution of this formula, which is presented down below, um, by the way, this is a problem, uh, but I do present the full solution in notes as well as uh, in the video pre 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 presentation. Now, the, the solution involves complex numbers, and uh, I'm very excitedly trying to explain that this is a, a very interesting example of how trigonometry is related to algebra of complex numbers and, uh, and the sum of geometric progression. I mean, if you will follow the, the whole solution of this thing. So this is the level of knowledge which I would like students uh, of the high school to be familiar with, how to uh, synergize different things, because the more you know, the more connections you see between the different things. And I'm talking about philosophical issues right now. But this is actually the, the art of mathematics is all about, how to find these connections between, in this particular case, between uh, trigonometric series and complex numbers and uh, some of the geometrical progression. This is uh, one of the interesting examples of how the intelligent and, uh, and, uh, uh, and, and truly analytical approach to problems actually uh, might be. So that's just one of the examples. And um, uh, let me uh, go back to uh, uh, let me back to uh, something else. Let's say geometry, for instance. So I click geometry. Um, I, I hope you have it followed as well. Now in the uh, in the plane geometry section, and by the way, the three G geom geometry, solid geometry, I did not really. Um, do anything. That, that remains to be done. Um, so, for instance, you have, uh, uh, let's say, circles. Let's click on circles. And uh, on the right of the screen, you see there are many different um, uh, lectures here. Uh, now, every one of them, after the first one, actually, uh, is the, uh, the collection of uh, a few uh, different uh, small theorems or, or problems or something like this. So if you will click uh, on any one of those, in, in theory, I mean, it should be done sequentially, obviously, for the person who is, you know, uh, uh, trying to, 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 to do the whole educational process. But in any case, what's interesting is, that let's say, for instance, I click on mini theorem 3. I have a bunch of theorems here. Um, any one of them is interesting by itself, but they're small, so I combine them in one lecture. Um, and uh, sometimes I specify the proof as well, like in this particular case. Sometimes um, the proof is, or a solution is, in the, in the video presentation. Well, basically, that's it. That's all I wanted, actually, to show you. I, I don't want to go through exams, because that requires some signing in, et cetera. It's, uh, it's too much. Um, anyway, you are um, welcome to, to try Unizor.com. It's completely free, as I was saying, no advertising. And if you find it useful in, in, in any way, just spread the knowledge that, uh, you know, we need smart people and mathematics is the perfect tool to, uh, to develop the intelligence and, uh, and creativity. That, that's exactly what, what I like it was. Um, okay, again, if any questions, I would be happy to, to answer. I think I've done fine with times. It's five to one. Okay. All right. So uh, I will wait for another five minutes, and basically then I will close close the recording. Uh, thanks for applause, Lucy.
Okay, Daniel, I wish you luck. And again, if there is something which is not yet that on the screen, um, just, you know, wait. Uh, I'm, I'm actually doing a lot of things uh, on this web page, but it's enormous. I mean, the amount of material is, is really huge. And the most importantly, I would like to put as many problems as possible, and that requires um, a certain amount of time, obviously. And I also had a problem I just want to share with you, if you're still with me. I would like to share with you my problems with exams. You see, I didn't want to give um, e examples uh, of, for, for exams which are kind of trivial, like solve this particular uh, equation and uh, then multiple choice answer A, B, C, D, or E or something. Um, I, I wanted to do it a little bit more creatively. For instance, I, um, I, I, I asked the question, solve this equation and find the, and, and solve that equation and, and find the roots which are common between them. So I don't really give explicit answers. Uh, so I was trying to be inventive as much as I could with, uh, with, uh, with exams. Uh, have been trying to find a good method of teaching subjects on the web, outside the box, if you will. But I don't know if it, that, that this particular methodology, uh, Daniel, that, that this particular methodology which I was just explaining um, would, would, would satisfy your needs. Um, I don't know. I mean, you can do a lot of things with this. Uh, what's important is that the teacher can actually individually um, give uh, assignments to the students in the group and then uh, basically check exams or, or answer questions. I think it's much more uh, productive than basically giving one presentation to all the students. Strong one will probably be bored and the, and the weak one will not understand it uh, if you do it on the average level. All right, I'm glad, I'm glad you liked it. All right, we have still three minutes, guys, before I close the recording. Um, now, what, what was interesting, actually, is if I would like to put uh, proof of the theorem into the exam, it's very difficult to do it um, in, in a nice fashion. So. Um, what I did was I presented the theorem and then six different proofs and only one of them is correct and uh, all other five had a little logical mistake. And to tell you the truth, to make an incorrect proof with a logical mistake, however small, was more difficult than in, to, to prove it in reality. Okay, uh, I, I think it was uh, in, in, informative. Uh, I, I hope you you liked it, Lucy, as well. You are a Boston round here, right? So, all right. So I'm closing the recording, and uh, thanks very much for participating, guys. Goodbye. Uh, everybody, you have to really leave the room so I will be able to close the recording. I still have, okay. Just press the X in the right top corner. I still have Daniel and, uh, and Cheryl and, okay, Cheryl. Please leave the room pressing X in the top right corner.